Welcome to the Talk As She Podcast episode. I don't even know what podcast number this is for the first time ever. I'm usually on comeback episodes, I like to talk about the Eshies because that's the thing that happened before. But uh, today I'm joined by someone pretty cool, like I was saying. Um, my name's Natalia. I am a small business owner. And Chiara does a lot of the cool like social media stuff for my business and at this point i'm just like our business whenever i'm like like into meetings or something i'm like this this girl like this girl um (laughs) this is a girl who has the ideas that that we're gonna do like especially for like when we do collaborations with brands um i i always like you always have a say in these things so you do so much more than just like social media for like the brand i try yeah (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah no and it's it's so amazing really and i'll say it more as the episode goes on but it, it really is incredible it's like i said like i love giving back to it i love putting in what i can and like seeing it flourish and seeing an idea like boom and and, and just be so loved by people i i think that's really you know what I think that's really what social media should be about, about like doing something that you like. And, you know, if a lot of people don't respond to it, that's completely fine. But when a lot of people do resonate with something, it does make you feel like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in feeling like this stupid little meme or this stupid little whatever. Because because at the end of the day, it's not stupid. At the end of the day, like I feel like social media... You know, we we try to do more than just sell something, which is something that from the beginning, I remember being like, okay, um, I want to, how about we do this? And you're like, taking it off the table, like, I don't want to feel like we're selling something. And, from and it's that funny because like, the, the way that like we, we did get into working together was like, I already had my brand established. Right. And you naturally like, lean towards it, you, you wanted the product. And yeah. I noticed that you were creating really cool content. So you you did like do a collab with the brand and it was really fun. And afterwards, like, I don't know how much time passed by, but I, I, I know that I wanted somebody to take care of social media. Right. And I remember like what you did was really cool. So I reached out and it was such an organic thing. Like you were, you were already really good at making content for my brand, for my business. So I was like, why the f- just not have her on and we've been we've been working together for like what three years now changed my life i want to tell you like changed my life completely and it came in like such a such a moment for me where i was like moving i was like post pandemic um but for real though it, it did change my life and it is just such a blessing like i would describe my work as a blessing i tend to get the ache with certain like trends that are going around where it's like you know it's trying to be cringe but like there's a really thin line between like irony and like right i'm really buying into this shit like i see so i don't know i'm like whatever i think that says a lot about like because i'm pretty sure the original poster she was like almost joking she was like oh when i got what to work i put my makeup whatever and then like there's no control over it, you know, like, like the internet went crazy being like, oh, me doing nothing is being mindful in the mirror, like, shut up, but, yeah. No, I, I love how, like, some TikTok creators obviously capitalize on, like, being ironic and, like, being really campy in the content that they put out, but some people take it so literally yeah. and make it into, like, a whole mantra, yeah. like... <laughs> like you see all all these micro trends going around it's like you get that like the little housewife you get like the clean girl everything like takes such like it 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 stems from irony but it ends up being like the most irritating that you see on your (laughs) day-to-day yeah no like uh that just i hate the clean girl thing like what does that even mean it means that you're nasty if you like wear like if you're like a maximalist like that that sucks i have no clue i feel like we should stop giving like labels to shit blueberry nails that's one of those things that i was like tomato girl what is that i honestly i i don't 
I don't get a lot of things like this. This summer, like I went traveling, and everyone like like that was foreign in Rome was like European summer, like um, like recording themselves for like TikTok. <laughs> um, I'm guessing, um, yeah. but like kind of being this like irritating thing in like a setting where social media doesn't need to exist you're traveling like you don't need to be like so chronically online when you're like in the middle of of rome looking at these like beautiful like right it it's such it's it's so weird like i i don't understand why people really need to drag it out so much it's like leave it on tiktok and move on yeah i mean being chronically not chronically but like being a little offline this month has helped me so much and i don't know like i feel like people really should try it people should really try to touch grass or touch coliseum as those yeah. people should have been doing i mean if you can touch coliseum of course touch coliseum um but if you can only touch grass then touch grass even if it's like artificial grass um i don't know like I, I try to Go like Home Depot. ground myself with like my little house plants when I'm in the city because sometimes grass in the city is disgusting. I, I'm I'm all for like everyone in the city picking up and like moving to like a rural place where everyone has like a, a nice river nearby and let's let's settle down elsewhere. Why are we making this city like the hub of everything? Like the creative people are here. Like, the business people are here. Yeah. Why, though? Like, let's move on. But that is so common, too. I feel like that happens literally everywhere. Definitely. At least, like, on the west side of the island, like, I'm noticing, like, there's, like, a bigger, like, boom of, like, businesses, like, s small um, restaurants that are giving excellent service. Right. And there's, like, this community vibe going on that I really wish yeah. I could, like, tap into that. Right. Um because the vibes are really, really good. Um, obviously, um, it's a little bit harder to to like get into because I guess the the business vibes there are different. Like over here, it's more like quick and trendy. Over there, it's more like you kind of cultivate your own thing. And um, yeah, like I, I, I see a lot of like small restaurants that kind of like get into this whole branding of of their operation it's really cool like over here i i'm i i think um we're kind of like forced into boxes um and everyone's kind of doing the same thing um even the restaurants are all like doing asian fusion i don't even know like but what you say is actually really true and like well, well by what i've heard because like a lot of people have said that like they just lose their minds in a good way in our West. Like, they're always like, oh, my God, the West has, like, the best vibes and the best, like, they come renewed from El West. And I don't even, I don't even know why. And I, I guess it is what you say about, like, I mean, wh why would you say that that is? Why would you say that people in the West are, like, just chiller and, and what's the reason? Um, I feel like there's uh, a really tight-knit sense of community there. Like, everyone knows what everyone's doing everyone kind of recognizes other people's strengths and they kind of like make an effort to collaborate in a way that's like intentional and like respectful of these people's like time and talent um i see that the main difference is that there's not like a lot of focus on on money sometimes like it's really sometimes like an exchange of of efforts and sometimes over here in the city we get a little bit like stuck on on you know needing needing to to pay for for services so we kind of like hold back in collaboration because it's like oh this is like an expensive service whilst over there like everyone's so excited to like uh, a local artist wants to make the menu for this new restaurant and yes. like you know it's kind of like people um go out of their way to really be part of their community and i love that i feel like that's that's why people over there are are chiller i would say because they're not that like materialistically focused 
I think out here a lot of people are like in survival mode and I think that happens in a lot of like major cities in general but I feel like in in San Juan that does happen where it's like I don't know you you don't know me and like this is what I need and you need to give it to me and uh, you know everyone needs to fend for themselves over yeah here. for sure a like a lot of people always uh, romanticize the west they're always like oh my honestly I feel like the east side and the west side have similar vibes like it's it's this coastal um like collaboration far away from the noise and the mess definitely and the rat race if you want to put it that way yeah i i would say that um a lot of creativity blossoms in these like areas because people want to take it a little bit easier they're not that obsessed with like appearances and like again the rat race like that corporate ladder they're not obsessed with that they're kind of like aware that they have all this like beautiful land that they can explore often so they're like i want to have like work-life balance i don't want to be like a corporate peon um so obviously <laughs> so obviously they do make an effort to like have their own thing going and just have a, like a fulfilling life right. before um having uh a an income that they deem like is is good enough you know i feel like uh with that me metropolis but actually literally metropolis lifestyle is like the anticipation of like i mean you've heard this phrase of like how um a lot of people are like currently embarrassed millionaires if you have you heard that phrase of like current like cur right now i'm i'm hustling you know right now i'm like but in the future i'll be making a lot of money or whatever when i think uh in contrast like in in the west like people are more like you know this is i want to live a consistently decent life i want to live a consistently like successful yes but also fulfilling like you said life like where i'm like happy to wake up and happy to, to have like the people around me and happy to like work and help these people in a very genuinely humble way whereas like over here it's like oh right like You know, all these women, so I'm imagining some guy on a podcast just being like, all these women are like not for me right now, but they'll be for me when I have my Lamborghini, you know, like that it's horrible, horrible. And like, or, or you know, just, just everyone is, is kind of, has kind of a sense of that, of like, I'm struggling right now, but in the future, you know, and it's like that, that shouldn't be, or at least in my opinion, it shouldn't be like a philosophy to live by. And you should always... You should wake up every day being like, okay, I'm okay with the life I live. Okay. Yeah, honestly, the difference I mean, between... you can be ambitious. The difference between being chill and being a tryhard is um, people who are tryhards, they're, you know, they do have a lot of things to unpack within themselves. Like, right. you know, a lot of these things come, like, either it's generationally passed down or they themselves have a lot of things that they have to work through. But, um being a person that's truly truly chill which is like how i would categorize like um people in the west to to be um it's just they're content they're yeah. humble they don't envy anyone's like lifestyle they are just very centered within themselves and their immediate surroundings mm -hmm. i feel like the whole try hard thing it's just because you are so um you're you're hyper aware of everything around you yeah. you want to do everything all at once you want to be everything to everyone yeah and if not you'll be irrelevant if not no one's gonna care if not right. you're gonna be broke and not survive right. pretty much pretty much like literally relevancy equals not surviving not living in right. in this environment yeah i think that that's like the main difference it's, it's not even like a major It's not even like a major thing. I feel like a lot of people move to the city to like make connections and and obviously like get more opportunities. That is something that I love. Like I I do want to meet more like-minded people because I don't meet a lot of like-minded people in the east. So I'm like I do want to meet more creators and things like that, but finding genuinely someone that does want to also put in like effort to do something real and genuine and not like cookie cutter like it, it is hard so it's like you got to find this balance of like i i want to do this for fun and for serious but i also um can't really be around people that just want to chase yeah i've been living in a city now for like six years um and i feel that um it's been a very humbling like 
last couple of like and not even six years i think it's more um but it's been a very humbling like last couple of years like especially since the pandemic i feel that everyone kind of went into like this survival mode and a lot of people's like masks like fell off during that time yeah no pun intended ironically um (laughs) but like i feel that they had been keeping up this like this like facade of like oh like i'm cool like it doesn't matter like i'll chill like you can be yourself whatever um like in the aspect of of like business which is like the area that i'm in um and after the pandemic you know a lot of like financial um financial struggles started to happen and everyone kind of like went into like shut off mode in the way that they they want to protect themselves they want to protect their assets they want to protect their time but they're being like dicks about it they're being absolute dicks about it um they're being mean to people around them they're like they're fucking up shit that could have been potentially like fruitful for them and i've i've had like shitty experiences with a lot of 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 people uh, in my area of of you know like small businesses um and i i like to like connect with people who are creative people who are like in business people who are in finance and everyone's kind of like um going their own way being very protective but um they're also like noticing how they can take advantage of people and they do like make an effort to like take advantage of people while they're at it yeah um and that's kind of like um something that maybe on like a small town you wouldn't experience like people aren't really that like they're not that machiavellic about things like it, it they do see the community on like this bigger aspect so it's like let me just like respect the people around me like even if you do want to make like a quick buck out of something you're not gonna you know you're not gonna fuck over like your peer because you know Mm -hmm. that it's a small uh tight-knit community so you don't want to like ruin that for yourself especially knowing like in in small towns you get a lot of community support Mm -hmm. that the whole thing of like it takes a village yeah. Move to a small town and you're going to see the village. Yeah. When you're in the city, the village is um, Uber Eats and um, DoorDash. That is your village. Um, those are the only people who are going to fend for you. <laughs> yeah. um, there's, yeah, for sure. there's not really like a community aspect that I would admire here because, um, yeah, I just feel, I just feel like a lot of people lack this this like i guess dreamer aspect of like things could be better and i could do more for other people and it would come back to me multiplied um and we could do this together and we could do like something really amazing with this like you put in your talents i put in mine and i think i think that's something that's definitely missing from a lot of those types of projects and things but even that dreamer mindset i feel is like so harmful for people who are very like sensitive and very giving because you do like you do give and give and give and then at the end it's like oh i feel like i've been taken advantage of and i don't really see a reciprocity here um so i i feel that um i've i've been more aware of that in the city like um in the last years like i feel i need to visit my family much more to be able to really like decompress and center myself because I do find myself getting like exhausted of of being like so nice and like being so optimistic and being like such a dreamer about things being such a dreamer about like my own path that Mm -hmm. I'm taking the career path that I'm choosing um I I really do feel like my spirits um sometimes like are are so low here um i have to go back home and i have to like chill with my dog and my cat and my my brother like be reminded of of who you are kind of like in trend like 
yeah in essence you know because that does happen like i think that can happen to a lot of people who gain a lot of success they kind of do maybe they don't get lost in the sauce but they do kind of like for like there is something of like uh, is this even me or is this what i'm doing or is this just is this me or or do i want like more from this or whatever and then like when they go back maybe to their uh hometown or you, you know reconnect with like family members or friends or something that you've known for a long time or like all your life uh pretty much it does feel like okay like i'm i'm a i'm coming back to me and it, it i people i feel like people don't really uh, understand the power of that of like going back to like things that are very much you and that you want to have forever in a way i know that's that sounds kind of weird but yeah i feel like the the biggest like aspect of this it's because like um people tend to project their own like um ideals onto you yeah. so sometimes you feel like the reason why you're doing things um people aren't really getting the the vibes right yeah or or their idea of success as well like they can br they could tell you like oh you got to do this you got to do that and it's like first of all they don't they most of the time don't have a clue what they're saying or what they're asking from you or what they're like telling you to do and you know every path is different and every i don't know like you know you gotta if you want to do that and you want to be successful doing that then that's fine but you also like when you're being told to do so many things or when you're being projected onto you gotta kind of find those convictions of like no what i want to do is this what i want to achieve is this and i'm gonna do it this way because a lot of people are always like oh you gotta work a lot more than what you really should or like in a way that makes you lose your mind and that just really shouldn't be it i think and respectfully like i feel like ambitious people should shut the fuck up um literally just shut the fuck up um or ambitious people because i do love ambition but i do feel like first of all in this day and age you can't be ambitious and be like sane i would <laughs> say or or even a good I, person i mean either. i get it like i feel like I, we're both like ambitious people but yeah. first and foremost like we are like Human. calm people who like are able to read the room we're able to read the person that we're talking to yeah, um a lot of ambitious people they're so like in their own head narrow-minded yeah yeah they they don't get when's like an appropriate time to talk about these things and maybe like suggest um certain like certain like moves that you should make to better yourself is that and honestly the only time you should bring this up is like when you're asked about it yeah. and when you're like somebody comes up to you and it's like oh could you help me with this otherwise it's like unsolicited advice like yeah. shut the fuck up that, that's what i don't like about um i feel people our generation they feel like since we're the same age they're so comfortable with just like oh like this is what i would do if i was in your position and i'm like well you're but well, you're not though and also like um i'm an introvert like i'm an introvert and people can talk me into being like annoyed um, yeah oh same i get so easily overstimulated right by this type of people because i'm such like a calm person i do think that like, my brain is going like a thousand miles per hour yeah. but um generally like on the exterior i i carry myself in like a calm way yeah. um so getting all this like word vomit from someone who's like maybe projecting their situation onto mine and they're kind of like yeah. suggesting all these things it's annoying it's genuinely annoying and i know that some people are especially um like ambitious and extroverted and talkative um and they do want to connect um, yeah it, it is like there is you know we do tend to bring a, a level of culpability culpability to those people but at the same time maybe they've been raised in a way or maybe they've just been brought up in a way that's like This is the way to connect and talk to people by like imposing onto them. And it's like, maybe they don't think they're doing anything wrong. True, but I think that time is kind of changing. Hopefully, I feel like, yeah. I feel like now, like 
really being able to read the room is like a better skill than being yeah. good at giving advice because like some people are like oh i am great at giving advice like are you good at shutting up perhaps um because i i, I mostly get this with men um some women who are girl bossing their little asses off um do tend to pick up on like what is the the male like standard of of like success and like charisma um and they're also like playing into this like role that is is given to men who are like successful and this the image of of men who are um like charismatic and and they get shit done but they turn into the same like the same thing it's just yeah. uh, it's that's why it's so it, it's so grounding for me to be able to go back home like mm -hmm. connect with my family like they're just very like humble simple people um very fun funny people and those are like the main like my my main values are just like being able to have fun, being able to, to chill. To like what you to, do. Yeah, to be to at like peace what with what you do as well. Because like some people take on more than what they can chew as well. Like we're like, oh, let's let's do this project. And then it's like you're losing your mind for like two months straight. Yeah. And it's like, no, let's not do that ever again. How about that? Uh, it, it, this probably sounds like a lot of like like random like words put together. But like we're both in creative careers. So yeah we kind of get to see this on a day-to-day -day. like yeah. we we get to like feel out the vibes of the impact our career has on our community because it's such a direct impact right um i feel like a lot of people get to be able to remove themselves from their community when they're working because they do have this very clear line between what is work and what is life yeah. but like our life um shapes our our work so much which is something that happens with like influencers in general hate them or love them or whatever but that the, that is something that they have where it's like they don't have that line very clear it's like you know i have to bring my life into my work and like vice versa and it's it's kind of unblurred but with us i i, I mean i think it's way better because we just get inspired, I think. I think it's more of an inspiration thing where, like, things that happen or things that we see, like, we incorporate into our work. And that's, like, so... I love that. I'm very grateful to get to do that, just in general. But, like, a big reason why we're able to, like, navigate things so well in life is because, like, we kind of have each other as, like, a baseline of what it feels like to, to feel understood and respected. Yeah. Um, like in in your area and i feel like a lot of people don't get that and they don't have like a lot of self-respect when it comes to like um maybe like freelancing maybe like small businesses maybe like um there is a hustle culture mentality of like i have to be grinding all the time or i'll die there is and a lot of people settle for really shitty like working conditions because it's like oh, if I am doing freelancing, if I'm doing creative work, I kind of have to settle for, like, what it is I'm given, like, my peers that I'm given. I feel like a lot of people really accept the shitty um, circumstances, and they're like, well, um, this, this person that I know who is in my same field uh, is shitty, and um, they're mean to people. Yeah. They do problematic things. Uh, they treat me badly, but we have to stay friends because we're in the same industry. Yeah. Um, and I feel like by by us, like by us being able to work together, having similar values, having um, first and foremost respect for each other, yes. we we value each other's time and creativity so much. Yes, and, and our personal lives as well. I think that's where the actual success comes from and that's what I value probably the most where it's like we both value our time. We know how hard life can be and so like um unexpected you know like i've had a lot of i mean throughout this these past few years i've had a lot of emergencies where i'm like oh I, I have to literally stop working for a sec but then i'll retake it it's not like you're super strict of like oh like this has to be done now or whatever because it's like it, you know that's no way to live either you know things can def work work 
can definitely wait. And I know I'm speaking from like a pretty privileged place because it, it is something that we can both mold and be like, okay, if we can't do it now, we'll leave it for later. Um, you know, the business isn't going to die or anything like that if we post tomorrow instead of today, you know? But I think that's what I value the most where it's like, you know, we get each other's values. We're both women. We both like understand where um need, like family needs can come from where like emotional needs can come from where we're both like you know i'm not feeling it today i can't really bring it to you today so i'll bring it tomorrow or i'll bring it the next day and i i think that's the most important thing because i feel like you know with art and with creative things you can't really rush them definitely and they can't really be you know brought out in a moment of stress or uh rush or like okay i gotta do this now and i gotta present it now it's more like, you know, whenever we can, we'll do this and it'll be great because we did it with a clear mind and with respect to our time and just respecting each other's space and time. Um, but yeah, definitely. Like, I feel the absolute pillars for you being able to 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 be in like a, a fulfilling and sustainable creative environment is to feel respected to feel valued and to feel like there's opportunity for growth right. um because if you align uh, on values you know that it can be like a sustainable long-term yeah. relationship and um yeah i'm just i sometimes i'm in awe of how little empathy people can have um it's funny because like i feel sometimes that creativity takes a lot of um feeling and being able to to be sensitive but a lot of creative people <laughs> lack <laughs> so much empathy um they lack humility um and i feel like that's something that we truly need to work on um as as a whole yeah. because obviously like um i do try my best um but obviously there's areas where i where i lack um but at least i know i'm not hurting and yeah of course Oh, no, dude, I would say that, like, you're definitely very compassionate when it comes to those things. Like, I, I, I cannot see you as someone who's, like, super selfish or super, like, demanding. Like, that is never a word that I think I could use when describing you because that, I would say that's the least thing. And it's not bad to be demanding, but I think if you were to be, I, I think it is in, in moments where it's either really needed or you also have a humanity to yourself. You know, it's not like you're a machine and you're like, oh, everything needs to be working all the time. It's like, no, like we get each other when it comes to that. I also, um, a big, a big reason why I'm able to like be compassionate is because I have my own shit together. I feel like a lot of people who don't have their shit together tend to project this this chaos onto other people. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to be so strict with like certain like timelines and ideas. And it's like, you yourself don't have your shit together. So why the fuck should I? Yeah. Um, but like, I know that I have my shit together. I have a really clear um, line between like, like admin task is kind of like the thing that I know I'm able to do like mm -hmm. on command. Right. Like I, I need to get up and I need to get, go do that. Um, creativity is the thing that I can't force. It's kind of like the thing that comes to me um, being whimsical, like going on a trip and like seeing beautiful things. Like that's the way that I get inspired. And I tend to come back with like such a, a cool muse that I'm able to like sit down, write it out. Um, um, but like admin stuff, it's definitely something that I, I have my shit together on often. So that's why I... I'm able to like very clearly visualize and map out what it is that I need and realizing that there's no urgency in whatever the fuck it is that I'm assigning to somebody else mm -hmm. um, because if I'm assigning it to somebody else, it's because it's not urgent. Right. Yeah. But a lot of people, they kind of don't. They lack that patience that it takes to actually be successful, I would say. Like, y you know, you've seen that, like, meme that's, like, a comment that says, that'll take three years. And then someone replies, like, the time will pass by anyway. Like, 
I think that there's a sem a, a semblance of that in what you're saying of like, you know, if you want to accomplish something, if you want to do something, it might take three weeks, it might take three years, but it's gonna get done. And, and it's like you said, like, if you're assigning it to what someone else, it's not urgent. I think there's a lot of truth in that of like, you know, I want to get this done, but I have to depend on someone else and that'll take two months but that's fine because by the time two months comes around i will be more than ready to tackle that issue yeah of course and like let's just talk about leadership for a sec because that's kind of like the the thing that a lot of people struggle with like right. creative leadership um especially because like corporate leadership is such a clear-cut thing where you kind of like There's books about it. You get trainings on it. Um, creative leadership is this very, like, very, like, um, independent um, area where we're kind of, like, creatives are, are trying to shape it a little bit. Um, but I feel that creative leadership should start with a sense of, of respect mm -hmm. and a sense of like um i don't know like an openness to see um a lack of so sociopathy because i feel like sometimes we think about these people that take these like courses or read these books or whatever yeah. and it's first like okay like first off be a bitch. like how to be a leader be a bitch And oh my god, like the the thirty laws of like whatever power, like Robert Green, that book. I I've heard of that, but I don't know which ones those are. But like, yeah, pretty much just like be mean, be like lack yeah. any. No, the Machiavellic uh, genre of of self self help books. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. I mean, anyone that has like a a, a what do you call those like a, a sense of inferiority that you feel like you need to tower over people or you need to learn how to tower over people emotionally or mentally or whatever and it's like you know you can consider that the person that you're hiring or the person that you want to work with is an, a, a real yeah. person that shit doesn't translate well into like creative leadership at all because i feel obviously like we come we know so many like creative people who are good at what they do but they're awful with their people skills because yeah. they kind of like project their own like work ethic and their own ideas into onto other people like even their own process like they want like the people around them to have the same processes mm -hmm. the same ideas to suffer the same I, i hate that mentality of like oh i suffered so you also have to suffer if you want my level of success and it's like that's, that's not why it's like so rare to for you to see like um actual like 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 good outcomes from collaboration there's always like like we in our local like little bubble we get to see so much drama of like people who like misunderstand each other yeah. and mis misunderstand each other's like work ethics misunderstand uh, values yeah. and at the end of the day it's a misunderstanding no one's in the wrong mm -hmm. no one's in the wrong but like we're all humans no, one, no one's able to get off their high horse and like see that see yeah. that Their way isn't the right way, but they or the only way. They have the guts to go and like burn these people to the ground because they d didn't do the thing that they were expecting they would do. Honestly, I fucking hate that because um, part of like you know creativity is this beautiful, beautiful gift, but a lot of people really do take on the tortured artist role, where it's like nobody understands me like i don't click with anyone like i'm an outlier like shut the f up you're not the only person who's ever like taken a picture and put on like a sepia filter on it like you are not yeah it's just this tortured artist uh tortured artist mentality is is really f***ing up people's vibes yeah. it's making people like wanna like quit their whole f um yeah. creative endeavor their little projects because it's like oh i i these people are bullies like honestly these people are miserable don't Everyone, listen to them no one likes my work do you like your work 
do you like what you're doing or are you doing it for validation of other people? You know, that's definitely something that a lot of people don't keep in mind. Like, do you think I would keep doing this podcast if I like cared about views pretty much like i love doing this i love interviewing people i love talking about but i love things. that people care on your behalf it's like it's given fans no but i feel like a lot of people project it. they're like oh i would be like so like embarrassed if i i tried this thing and it didn't work out like cool you keep not trying things this is what it's like to be blessed with a really good job that's that's really what it is that's really what it is if if your employer loved you if your employer respected your time space and uh personhood then you would be able to do whatever you liked whether or not like it would be successful and uh you know you're hating from the outside from you know whether it's a job that you need to survive unfortunately or it's like a really well-paying job that you absolutely hate you see this and you can't fathom someone doing this is why i like i always think what that I? I always think that influencers should get jobs so they could be free from the shackles of like whatever the f they're doing for partnerships and money it, it's so sad you know that's something I, sh I actually wanted to talk about yeah this is okay so i did have a little crisis some months maybe at the beginning of the year probably where i was like okay i love being a creator i love doing my little stupid video stupid silly little videos and podcasts and photos and whatever it literally the only bad thing is that you are kind of at the mercy of big companies if you want to do it sustainably because you know you gotta get partnerships you gotta work with people you gotta maybe sell something that does not come genuinely to you which makes me sad like even when i watch like really big youtubers or creators or whatever kind of i don't want to say sell out because it's not like they're technically technically selling out but it does feel like oh you're doing this part for money and like there are a lot of people that sure it comes genuinely to them but another like a lot of other people it just doesn't and i hate like seeing those kinds of things try hard baby it's not like jealousy it's not like oh like this person gets to work with da, 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 da. no it's more like isn't it sad that we can't do it like that everything we do can't be something that we do because we love it and we have to sell freaking shampoo to do it like that that's something that does make me feel so grateful for working with you because it is something that i do appreciate and that c does come genuinely you know it's not like i do it because i love to do it but it's also like something that sustains me so it's kind of like this cycle of like giving you know it's a what's that term it's it's a term in nature that's like a symbiotic yes. symbiotic relationship in a way and i really i just want to say that i am eternally grateful for that yeah I'm, I'm really happy that we've we've been able to connect so well and um definitely like um it's it's given me like a, a little standard of like what it is that i'm looking for within people and who i want to connect with this is why i like i'm so f and picky with other people thanks kiara thanks for making me b and picky with other people because like i i get i'm able to like read read the vibes quickly like it's just i, I just want to meet people who are humble who are like genuine and i rarely rarely come across um people who like now why am i in it why is it my fault it's your fault because you set you set the bar like i'm actually really touched by that thank you i i i mean i really try and it, it's it's not easy i mean it's like it does come genuinely to me but i do get what you mean because i think you're points of references are uh pretty hard it's yeah. it's pretty uh, you, you've been through through the fucking um shit ocean that we that we've traveled through like the odyssey but the odyssey is through an ocean of of <laughs> it's okay <laughs> if it gets us here if it uh leads us to you know and i've been very stupidly spiritual about like how everything's falling into place but i think it, it you know if 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 we did have to like go through all that true i mean at the end of the day everything happens for a reason but at the end of the day i'm i'm going to talk 
complain about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna complain about it forever. <laughs> I love that. I love that this episode has been like talking about tryhards, talking about living in the city, talking about like meeting with um tortured artists just being like trying to be genuine as much as you can even even in your work because i do feel like we are we do speak from a pretty good place of like we do what we like you know and we're not even just doing things to sustain ourselves we're doing things active like we're actively trying to keep something afloat but we've we've worked hard to get here yeah yeah no and and like i just i feel so grateful like i i cannot bring it to you enough that i feel grateful to be here to be a part of this to me it's so special and for you to give that to me is like i'm i'm flabbergasted bamboozled with how amazing it's been really yeah i'm glad um i feel like i've always wanted to do things that felt like were meaningful to me and were, were meaningful to my community and i feel like this is my my way of like you know, being able to fulfill that and, um, you know, we obviously we have a very small team, but um, there's obviously so much like growth that we're we're still we still want to do. So if anybody wants to work for Jaitru, let us know. Um, we're looking for specifically graphic artists. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> that's yeah that's my plug that's my plug <laughs> love the plug <laughs> but yeah um Nadalia, this has been amazing and i'm so grateful like always not just for the work <laughs> but also for my job but um just for always supporting me as well supporting my projects and which is it's like i said like it's not something i do just because oh, okay like i need to get paid i do it because it's like something i want to give back to and i think there's so much value in having something to give back to that has sustained you as well and i think that's lovely and powerful and i love that we've talked about just being as genuine as possible that's really been just the the thesis the there's a word for that it's like the the key no the He's a statement. But thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate your time being on here. And uh, yeah, anything else you want to say to our... Uh... That is all. Everyone have a good day. Don't be a try hard. Chill out. Touch grass. Thank you for watching the first episode back. Hopefully there will be more episodes. But in my lab, maybe I'll be working. So <laughs> bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, whatever that is.